Well, 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 it's the last thing you expect when you're waking up on a Sunday morning. Hello, lads and ladies, and welcome to this, and welcome back for another video on the channel. The time is quarter to 11 right now. It is the 3rd of September. We are six games in to Skybet League One. Fleetwood drew their opening game, have lost the last five, the last six in all competitions. And manager Scott Brown, who only signed a new deal in July, the start of July, just eight weeks later, finds himself out of a job in Skybet League One. Fleetwood Town have taken the decision to sack Scott Brown after a run of unfortunate defeats. And it sounds very much like it is the club's decision. They've, they've outlined that. The club have taken action after the last few games, saying it's not good enough. And Scott Brown has left the football club. In this video, we're going to give my thoughts, my thoughts over his tenure and who we should go with next. Again, this is a very rushed video. It won't be edited. It won't. It'll be raw. Um, no, to a degree as well. My, my actual opinions... I can speak now freely um, and Fleetwood Town need to, need to get this next appointment right. Scott Brown came in in May 2022 after disappointing, you know, appointments, let's be honest, of, you know, after Joey Barton, of Simon Grayson and then obviously Stephen Craney came in. We needed someone to come in. And, you know, get us back to not conceding goals. Get us back to being hard to play through. You know, being good on the eye and winning games of football again. Because we stayed up the previous season on 40 points. Last season, he did that. I think we only conceded 51 goals last season, which is a good stat. He conceded 80 or more the previous season. So, 30 goals or more is 0.6 goals a game. He conceded less. We had one of the best defence in the league uh, throughout last season. Uh, we got to the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup. We we got through Oxford City, Ebbs Fleet, QPR, Sheffield Wednesday over um, two legs. And we unfortunately lost 1-0 to promoted and champions at the time, Burnley, and who are now in the Premier League. So... Overall, his time in, you know, was, was all right in the first season. His football, in my opinion, was flat, was very dry, very hard to play through. Sometimes we played not to win, you know. We, we, we played for a draw. We didn't really go for a win. We kind of cared more about not losing than rather to go for a win. And that was a worry for me at times. And Against Plymouth away from home, you drew 0-0. It's all right. If we drew 1-1. You know, we, we went to Hillsborough, you know, got a draw in the cup. We only lost by a goal. We only lost by, a you know, by more than one goal last season, twice. Portsmouth at home, 2-0. Wickham away, 2-0. And they finished in the top 10 last season, both of them. So, again, our record against the better side, we beat Plymouth at home, was good. Because we played this system of being hard to break down and hit him on the counter-attack. And, again, we played not kind of not to lose, basically. However, th where it, the problem came was extras away. Burton, um, you know, at, at home where you, you lose by, you know, three goals to two. So many occasions against clubs that, no disrespect, are similar to Fleetwoods. Your Burtons, your Cheltenhams, um, you know, Accrington's, Morecambe's, you know, and obviously we had a decent record um, against Morecambe and, you know, Accrington last season, we beat them both. But it kind of felt like at times where against sides that we should be beating on a more regular occasion, we weren't quite doing so, we weren't being quite clinical. So it felt kind of at times Scott Brown would, you, you kind of think, well, is he under pressure here? And then he'd, we'd pull a result off, which managers have to do. I totally get that. And and get out of the firing line for a bit. And if, if I'm honest with you, <clears throat> I didn't see this one coming this season. Pre-season comes around. We lose nine players. However, you lose four loan players. You lose four players that you've released. One of which is Alex Cairns, who didn't really have a, a future at the club. Never played under Scott Brown. One's Dan Batty, which he didn't like Dan Batty. He wasn't a, a Scott Brown player. And... Realistically, the players we let go, Danny Andrew, he let go of his own accord. They weren't, <coughs> they weren't players that you'd you'd kind of think. Well, 
it's a big loss, that. You know, Scott Brown would be gutted about that, and he's had tools taken away from him. You lose Carlos Mendes Gomez, and you lose Lewis Warrington on loan. They are big boots to fill. But the loan players, they're a luxury, you know. So, we we, bit, we did bring in decent players like Adam Montgomery, who we've not seen yet in the Fleetwood shirt. Danny Mayer has, you know, on a two-year deal at his age, is a good signing. Um, we brought two, um, uh, you know, Toshiba Kimongo yesterday. Um, you know, we, we, we've also brought uh, Xavier Simons into the football club as well on deadline day. Um we brought about seven players into the football club and all players that Scott Brown wanted to bring into the football club. So there was no excuses. This season, the season started with every, the fans feeling optimistic about the season ahead. And I quite said, I went, the club are not in a great position right now. Andy Pilly, if you don't know, he's Fleetwood Town's chairman. Jailed, obviously. I'll let you go and read up what's going to happen. It's not my place. It's, it's not the time to speak about what our owner's done. That's for another... Another time, I won't be speaking about it. Uh, I'm not brushing it under the carpet, but um, I think the, the main point is that Scott Brown is no longer Fleetwood manager. That's the point of this video. Um, so we lose Andy Pilly, our focal point, you know, our sugar daddy, if you like, um, the one who's pumped over £20 million into the football club um, since its you know, existence, really. And, you know, six promotions in 10 years, 10 years in League One, which is a phenomenal achievement at League One level and at Fleetwood Town level. To do what we've done. Obviously losing him. And the club seemed to be a little bit in. Of although we still had Jamie Pilley. We still had you know directors. Like uh, Will Watt and Steve Kerwood. Who are good at what they do. You know they're very open with supporters. And you know they know the club. They'll have a chat with supporters. Which you can't fault them on that front line. It was a big shock to them all of a sudden. That you what, what you have to do day to day. Obviously they were planning for it. But you can't plan for stuff like this. Long term, they weren't planning for sacking a manager eight weeks ago. That's that's a kind of the the harsh reality of football, really. So losing Andy Pilly, losing the chairman, all this mess going on in the background, I kind of felt that Fleetwood would struggle to stay up this season. I put us, I believe, sixteenth in my table predictions around that area because I didn't quite think the squad was big enough. I didn't. I thought the mess upstairs would affect us a little bit, but never did I think. It'd be like this. So we drew away at Carlisle. They were the better side, in my opinion. And then now we've lost to Port Vale in the Cup. Cambridge at home, which was, what, two, three weeks ago. And that was the worst performance I've ever seen from a Fleetwood Town, this town side at Highbury Stadium. In my, what, 12 years of watching Fleetwood? Um, yeah, very, very bad. Um, and then... We do kind of react well at Bolton and Derby, but lose both games. We're 3-0 down after 37, 38 minutes, not playing the best of football. And then at Derby, we're in the game, we lose 1-0. Um, but again, it kind of felt like we're, not, we're playing not to lose rather than to win. And that's where, unfortunately, we came unstuck in those games and they had the quality to break us down. We didn't have that quality going forward. And then Jack Marriott rumours go on. Jack Marriott... Wanted to leave the football club. Scott Brown has even, has even said that in two, maybe three interviews. He said Jack Marriott is going nowhere now in three interviews. And he's basically saying Jack Marriott has got a hamstring strain, whether he has or he hasn't. And that's kind of the way you think, wow, th there must be something going on at the football club. Jack Marriott obviously isn't a happy, happy boy at being at the football club. He wants to move, you know, move, move football club, whether that's to be with his family, whether that's football reasons. And at the moment, I can't blame him. And I'm always a big believer in if a player isn't happy, you let them leave the football club. And you cash in. And I don't care we don't get as a good replacement, as long as they want to play for this badge, which is the most important thing within football, playing for your badge. As Alan, uh, as um, Chell would say, mean that badge to you. Um, there's one for no context, Chell. Um, and unfortunately, he doesn't want to play for the football club. And... It's a shame. And then, you know, we, we played Shrewsbury last week. We are in the game. We, we quit a couple of chances. We weren't great. Uh, don't let, that, uh, you know, a couple, you know, hitting the post, disillusion you. We, we didn't play well at all. And then they hit you on the break. You have, a, you have a man sent off a minute later. And I said, Fleetwood do all the wrong stuff at the wrong time, but they never do anything at the right times. And that is where we're struggling at the moment. And Scott Brown, unfortunately... 51 games into his career. Look, you know, that's... Well, 52 were yesterday, actually, now. So, he had 52 games. 
He had a 26.9 win percentage as Fleetwood Town manager. Earlier on, there was a lot of draws where it kind of felt like we were drawing games that we should be losing. The difference is now we're losing games that we were originally drawing. And that's what Scott Brown did last season. And that's what's changed this year. That clinical edge, that little bit of a, you know, a decision that's going their way or a bit of quality that's going their way and dropping their, you know, into their fortunes, that is the difference. And unfortunately, Scott Brown has paid the price and Fleetwood Town have, have got rid of him. One point from six, you know, you, you've lost to Cambridge and Shrewsbury, Charlton. They were, they were gettable opportunities to get points. And, you know, in my eyes, I think those teams, every team that have played Fleetwood will be thinking, we've got to beat Fleetwood. That's, that's just the reality of football. That's, you know, but unfortunately... Um, yeah, Scott Brown has left the football club. Elvis has left the building, um, some could say. But, um, yeah, it's. It, I'm shocked because I didn't quite think the club would make this move at this time. And, obviously, these are just my raw thoughts at this moment in time. It's not structured. It's not planned. These are just based on my opinions. Do I think it's the right decision? Yes, I do. But... It all depends on who comes in. Now, I, I know for a fact that Chris Beach will be linked to the job. He's a Fleetwood lad. He's at AFC Files as a, as a technical director now, I think, or, or head of football. And um, he was actually at an under-21s game the other day at Fleetwood as well. So it could be it could be someone like him. I would, would, I would like someone like a Carl Robinson, a Danny Cowley. You know, I'd like these, but are they going to come to Fleetwood when you've got no owner, as stated, you're six games in? You've, you know, you've not won a game, you're on one point, you're three points adrift already, um, a transfer window's closed, it's not a great squad, you've got a lot of injuries, you know, there's some good players, but it's not a brilliant overall squad, there's a lot of young players, a lot of, you know, you know, rarity about it as well, so if I was, if I was, you know, and you know, Andy Kerr or Jamie Pilly, I'd be thinking Carl Robinson, Danny Cowley would be the two. Carl Robinson as well. Did very well at Oxford, needs to sort his family issues out. Um, my mate, you know, my good mate, oh friends, um, Jack Ward, uh, the Jack Ward Football Podcast, one of the best content creators on this platform, by the way. I recommend you go and check him out. Um and obviously the stuff he's told me about Carl Robinson is that he does play attacking football, but he needs to sort his family affairs out. So um, I would take someone like that. It's come at a time where, you know, I was in bed this morning enjoying a sleep after, you know, travelling over nearly 600 miles yesterday. And Scott Brown club statement and I was gobsmacked. And I kept getting told that he will go if results go. And I went, I just couldn't see it with the mess that was going on in the background. So the club... A, need to sort his mess out in the background. We need to know what's going on in that football club because we don't at the moment know. The, F, the ethos of Fleetwood Sound, the song that Fleetwood Walk Out is, to is together in electric dreams. And one of the lines is, we'll always be together no matter uh, how far it seems. And that is a quote that I'm sticking to by now. And that is a quote that we have to trust with the football club. It's come at a right time. And I say that we don't do the right stuff at the right times on the pitch. But off it, you think, well, we've got two weeks now with no league game. And then we go, we play Oxford, we play Burton. And then I think we've got Leighton Orient and Cheltenham all coming up. So it's opportunities there to get a manager in place for that Oxford game. And how how big would it be if it was Carl Robinson managing against Oxford? But do I think it'll be Carl Robinson? I don't. Would I like it to be? Yes. So my overall thoughts was, I think it's right sacking Scott Brown. If I'm honest with you, it's six games in and you could say it's too early. We'll be still saying that in four games time, in five games time, in six games time. So there'll never, ever be a, you know, a right time you know, in people's heads, unfortunately. So Scott Brown, I thank him for what he's done for the football club, getting us to the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup, breaking record there. He got us to the third round of the, the, you know, the EFL Cup last season. He kept us up last season, finished 13th, did OK last season, didn't pull up any trees, but didn't. You know, fail. We, we were expected to finish in that ball area with our squad, with our budget. We did. He did the job. Unfortunately, this season, it hasn't quite worked for him. And unfortunately, he, he's paid the paid the cost for that. And and Scott Brown has left the football club. Um, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in below. Who do you think Fleetwood will get as a new manager as well? It's be be a busy, busy day. And if you are watching this, we'll, we, we will have League One live later on tonight as well. And all that jazz. So please like... Please subscribe if you're a League One fan, a Fleetwood fan, anything, get subscribing down below as well as Fleetwood Sack Scott Brown and 
Overall, a good decision. Need to get the right appointment in, though. It could end up being the wrong decision if you get the wrong appointment in, though. That's what I'll say. I wish Scott Brown all the best, but Fleetwood now can move onward together and hopefully we can start pulling off results because this is a hard, hard time to be a Fleetwood Town fan.